Hello there. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own boomerang out of paper. Uh, it's not as quite as impressive as this one that I picked up from the Kimberley region in Western Australia, uh, but we are going to aim to make something that's similar. You might notice that this one looks a little bit different to maybe the ones you might have seen on TV or on the internet somewhere. Often they might look a little bit more like a, a horse shoe shape. This one is nice and long, and that's because this one's, well, what I've been told, has been designed to take out the legs of a kangaroo or a wallaby or a, a larger animal, whereas the ones that are U-shaped are more for scaring birds and making uh, smaller animals run towards the person that might have a spear or something that might be a little bit more deadly. As far as I'm aware, a boomerang isn't normally used to do the final blow, it's normally used to make the animal move to where you want it to go. Some really great ideas from very ingenious indigenous people many, many years ago. So, we're going to make something like this, but it's out of paper, obviously a lot smaller, but we can sort of use this as some inspiration for our art. This has been uh, painted with ochre, it's a type of rock, and you can see it's got some leaves on one end, and it's got some nice patterns on this side. Um, where I live, in Melbourne, um, the, the cooler nations, the people here before us, the Wurundjeri, uh, they are more famous for painting using crosshatch artworks. Uh, they don't, they're not well known for dot paintings. Uh, as you can see, there's not really any dots on this one because it's from the Kimberley region. So there you go. And the thing I really love about this one is on, on this side, I don't know if you can see, but it's got some even more leaves and it looks just looks really, really cool. So let's learn how we can make our own returning boomerang. Just going to show you a couple practice throws. So it's good to throw on a little bit of an angle and see how many catches you can get in a row. All right, and that looks about three or four. That's a good aim. All right, so our first step, we're gonna to need to print it. Uh, in, you can find that attached in the description. You're gonna need some scissors as well because we're going to cut out the white border. So I'll fast forward it here and you will see I'll cut out real quick. <laughs> and the reason why is because we don't want those pesky white borders. That was just how the printer did it. If your printer's better than mine, then you can skip this step. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to cut it along this black line here. See right there. So we're actually going to cut it there horizontally so we can have two sections. This will actually get us to make two boomerangs. How good is that? So this top one, the one with the yellow and all the writing on it, that's going to be our practice one. And the one on the bottom, that's the one we're going to draw on and have as our final design. So we're going to get rid of the bottom one for now and we'll come back to it. And the top one, we are ready to go. So have a table and go along with me. We're going to see right here, number one, mountain fold. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take my time. I'm going to go from corner to corner, make sure they're touching and just yeah, really take my time to make sure they're lined up when I'm happy. Then I'll push down. So... It's called a mountain fold because when I open it up, you'll see it's going to look like a mountain. So just really make sure you use your nails to dig in and make sure the crease is nice and strong there. The nicer your folds are, the better it'll fly. So when I open it up here, you're going to see it does look a bit like a mountain when I hold it up the way where it's facing up, right there like a mountain. We also have things called valley folds. I'll come to that later. So number two, mountain fold, we're going to fold it right into the fold we've just done. I'm going to go right just until I'm almost touching that line that we've just created. 
but I'm going to just be about half a millimeter off. I want a little tiny gap. Again, taking my time, and I'm happy with that. All right, we'll turn it over, and we're going to do fold number three. So you'll see there's a little three mountain fold, and we're going to, again, just, just not touch that line. So they're just not touching each other. Uh, so that's when we fold it together, it'll just work a bit better. So we've done mountain fold one, two, and three. Brilliant. So the next step is we're going to fold it half again, but the other way. So with the open sides uh, facing our belly, we've got mountain fold number four. So the open flaps are towards our belly, and we're going to take our time. Again, just be really careful. It's not uh, doing anything silly there. And again, making sure the corners are touching. When you're happy, then push down. Again, it's always helpful to use your nails to just crease it finally, and then it will look excellent. Brilliant. We're going to go number five and six, and we're going to, again, uh, fold them. Now, these ones, it doesn't say mountain fold. It says invert, and that just means we do, it doesn't really matter if I fold it forwards or backwards uh, because we're going to actually turn it around later. So I'm going to fold, and I'm just going to, by the way, just check that bottom, it's not coming out of line. And I'm going to fold it like an aeroplane. So fold both the corners in, following uh, the middle line. So it kind of looks like an aeroplane. And again, just double checking the bottom is straight there. Use my nails, and brilliant work. So you can see we've got five and six invert fold, because we're going to invert it, and it's going to be sort of inside itself. So right now you can uh, turn it over and just make a nice crease on the other side. It's totally up to you. It'll just make a step later a bit easier if we just really make sure we fold forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. So it's really nice and loosey goose. Alrighty, I'll fast forward it now and we'll open it up. And now with seven and eight. Uh, we're going to again do a little aeroplane folds, just like we just did with the previous step. So again, I'm wanting to make sure I'm following that edge, maybe not necessarily following the middle, but following just where the paper meets the paper. So there's a tiny, tiny, tiny gap, as small as you can make that gap without it touching. Again, use your fingers to try and make it a nice crease. Now. We're going to actually go to the bottom, and we're going to flip from the left side to the right side. So sort of it's on an angle pointing to the right. And just with this corner where the line is, we're going to fold that again up. And so it's touching the right side, making that little aeroplane fold there. Again, when we open it, open it up, we'll be able to see that on the top, we have an arrow pointing upwards, and on the bottom, we have an arrow pointing upwards. That'll be really important for later. Excellent work. Our next step, we're actually going to open up the right-hand side of everything. And this is where we have that inverse thing. So you can see it makes a bit of a diamond here. So we have our mountain fold. And if we just go back with our fingers and we just, again, make sure it's a really nice mountain here, even in my example here, um, it's not the best. So I reckon you could probably do better than that. So I've made some mountain folds on all four sides. And then where it says valley fold, I'm going to want to go the opposite direction. So it's going to pinch it so it's going the other way, the opposite direction in the mountain. And you can see if I flip it over and I pinch it with my fingers... It's making a nice valley, and the other ones were mountains. Great. So now I've got my diamond, and we can go to the next step. So the next step is to put the right-hand side back down so it's nice and flat. And with our thumb, putting it in that inside part of the diamond, we're going to push it up against our right side and have that bit facing your stomach. Now, when I turn it on its side like this, I can put my other thumb in the triangle. Brilliant. So it's sort of made a bit of an L shape, as you can see. 
using this L shape and keeping my thumb right there, we're going to turn it around. And you can see there we have the mountain fold number two, just for reference. Now we have, we're going to need to push that left hand side down. And when we do that, uh, we're then going to put the top side down as well. And we're going to want this little flap to stay open. If it's not staying open and it's flat like I'm showing you here, uh, then you're going to have to get your finger in there and really force it open. Uh, so as you can see here, I'm really just making sure it stays up and makes a little uh, triangle. See, we have number 13 insert. And they've got the two arrows there. We're going to want to use our finger and push it into that cave we've just made, into that triangle. So I'm going to push it in here. And I'll move the camera here so you can see it really well. And I want to push it in so it's not creased. And take your time to then fold it down. So I'm going to go left side first, because that was the one I was focusing on. And then I'll do the top side next. Taking my time, pushing the folds down, making it nice and creased. All right, we're nearly finished. Our last step is just going to be tucking in our corners. So in the top right hand corner, we can see the 7 and 12. Um, on the right hand side, I'm going to open it up a bit. And I'm going to use my finger to push it open. Uh, so push it open so we're, we're flipping the fold right here. So you can see that right there. Um, so I'll do it one more time for you if you got a bit confused. So we're doing top right hand corner. I open it up, and I open up even further to that right-hand side of it, using my finger to help push that down, but again, making sure it's on the dotted line, and then pushing it nice and down. And now, where it says 14, insert, it's going to go into that pocket we just created. So you can see here, I'm going to use my finger and push it into that little pocket we created. All right, if you have... Stubby fingers like me <laughs> might find it a little bit tricky, but uh, hopefully you will not have as many issues as my uh, as I did. I'm going to shove it in there, but again, trying not to ruin it, uh, just putting it in neatly. You can probably be a bit more gentle than what I am right now. Uh, and you can see if I tug here, it's not coming undone. So that means I've done it correctly. Now in the bottom section. Uh, remember we folded this earlier and it made that triangle pointing up. So if I open that up, I uh, can see on the left hand side it's a single sheet of paper and on the right there's now three pieces of paper. So it might be a little bit harder to flip inverse, but we can still do it. We're going to put it in and again, same thing, it's going to wrap around and we're going to have another insert. And I'm going to be a bit more careful this time, push it in, shuffle it in, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle then crease it, and we are finished. So just double-checking all of our folds, and I'm pretty happy with that. Ready to go. So there are two ways to hold it. Uh, first thing, you need to make sure that that little line there uh, is pointing up. Uh, and then we're going to have our index finger on that number 12 there. We don't want it to have that straight line like that. Uh, if you do that, it won't come back. So unfortunately, if you're left-handed... Uh, you might need to throw with your right hand, otherwise it won't work. So, throwing it like a frisbee, you want to curl it right back into your wrist, and the trick is getting as much spin as possible. And there you go, it came back. Woohoo! Another method, you'll see I've got it that same direction, but instead I'm going to have my thumb right in the center, still like a boomerang, and you'll see that you, maybe you might get a bit more spin than what you were able to previously. Uh, if you sit down on the floor or sit in a chair and your room's like mine and doesn't have a big ceiling, you might find it a bit easier, like I have here. Nice. <laughs> so once you're happy with your design, what I would do is I would actually unfold this and then try and go through it again so I know I know the steps because later I'm going to want to do it on this really nice one where there's no writing, which means when I draw on it, put in my nice designs, it'll look really, really good. Put it on this one instead, it just wouldn't look the best. So, I'm going to unfold mine now, 
then again, quickly look through all the steps, rewind the video, watch it again, and try and make it on this piece of paper that doesn't have the numbers and the words on it. Okay, so I've finished my final design. Uh, you can see that all of the grey slash blue bits are on the inside rather than the outside, so I'm all ready to start decorating. So as I said at the start of the video, uh, I'm going to try and do some cross hatching, give that a go. So lots and lots of lines, really close, some going this way, some going that way. I'm going to use just browns to sort of represent uh, my ochre rocks that I'm going to try and do. We'll see how I go. Okay, so I've finished my first half. I'm really liking it. I'm going to look up some more inspiration and see some other designs other indigenous artists have made and see if I can replicate that to make mine look really awesome. All the best with your boomerangs today.